there's a more pressing matter demanding the attention of EU ministers. The desperate plight of thousands of illegal immigrants making the perilous journey by boat from Africa to Europe. Malta sits at the front line of this migration. The country's prime minister has warned, quote, we are building a cemetery within our Mediterranean Sea, unquote. My interview with Joseph Muscat in a moment. The disaster off the tiny Italian island of Lampedusa two weeks ago, in which more than 300 and people, 350 people died, highlights Europe's struggle to deal with boatloads of migrants who are desperate and willing to make the dangerous trip. So far this year, more than 32,000 people from Africa and the Middle East have arrived in Italy via Lampedusa and Malta, the EU's smallest state, by the way. Its prime minister says the burden is just too much, and he's calling for urgent help from the rest of the bloc. This rare video shows the very start of another rescue effort after a boat sank in the Mediterranean. Those on board, Syrians, risking their lives to escape the civil war. Men, women, and children plucked from the sea. Over the past two decades, 20,000 people have died trying to make the journey from North Africa to Europe. Comparatively speaking, the migrants you see here are actually the lucky ones. But for those rescued, life can be far from what they dreamed. Unusually for an EU country, Malta makes all illegal immigrants stay in secure detention centers while asylum claims are processed, and that can take months. Human rights groups in the European Union have been very critical of those conditions on Malta. So how can the situation be improved? Malta's prime minister says Europe must take decisive action to help frontline countries like his. Joseph Muscat, the Prime Minister of Malta, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Let's talk about this migrant problem that faces uh, many countries in Europe, including your small island nation of Malta. You have actually accused some European leaders of hypocrisy in dealing with this. You're at an EU summit right now. Have you had conversations with your counterparts about this issue? What have you said? I'm expressing quite clearly the fact that not only myself but our people, people in Europe, people across the world are disappointed by the fact that Europe is not taking decisive, decisive action to help mm -hmm. us frontliners, ourselves, Italy, Greece, save more lives and then see how these desperate people can be relocated within our continent. Right now we're getting many words of solidarity but very, very few facts. And that's what we want to because change. It's not enough to say, we'll wait until next year. Right, because that's one of the things you've said in the past, that European leaders are talking the talk, so to speak, but then taking no action, which is what made you say that some of them perhaps were guilty of hypocrisy in this case. And that's something that uh, people feel. You know, we're not exactly a military superpower. And it is quite exceptional that it is up to us and a couple of other countries to see through and rescue hundreds of people per year. Hundreds of desperate people fleeing first from Somalia, Eritrea, now even Syria. And if we, when, when in Europe we had the financial crisis, we all stuck together. There was solidarity. People from my constituency, from my country, forked out money from their pocket to give it to other Europeans because that's the thing as it should be done. That's what solidarity, European solidarity means. Now that there isn't a financial crisis, but there is a humanitarian crisis, um, we're not being shown the same solidarity. So I wouldn't want to believe that for Europe, money is more important than people. Unless that happens, you know, it's not an issue of what Malta can do in, in the next few months. It's an issue that come next year, you'll be uh, again reading news and reporting to your viewers that many hundreds more have died. That's the crude reality. And one of the videos we showed our viewers was one of a joint Italian-Maltese rescue operation in the Mediterranean. Uh, in October with, uh, according to the reports that we got, pretty much exclusively Syrians 
on board this boat that was in, in big trouble in the Mediterranean. But one of the ideas that you had was that the United Nations, the UN, should patrol the Mediterranean uh, along the Libyan coast where so many of these boats and these refugees board these boats to try to make it to Europe. Have you taken this proposal to the UN? And if so, what response have you gotten? We are right now discussing all possible um, proposals that can be put forward. We need, I believe, better patrolling in the Mediterranean. If no one member state is able to do that, if uh, Europe is not willing to agree to the necessary rules, then yes, why not have a supranational trusted um, organization such as the United Nations come in? You know. Uh, this is the, 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 the sort of practical politics, pragmatism that people want to see and which I believe can save lives. So I do believe that we have to explore all the necessary avenues. And we have to see, for example, Libya as part of the solution, not as part of the problem. I was in Libya just 10 days ago. Just after the prime minister got kidnapped, I had a long chat with him. And I do believe that there needs to be a better interface between Europe, the rest of the world really, and this country, not to let it become a failed state. But Human Rights Watch has said that Malta places nearly all the migrants that make it uh, to the island in detention centers. And the, human, the European uh, Court of Human Rights has issued three judgments against Malta for its treatment of migrants. So why... What is the issue there? Why is Malta getting it wrong once the migrants make it to, the, to your country? First of all, we have a disproportionate number of arrivals. So we have to take everything into context. And I do believe that detention is the only way in which we can get enough time to um, try to identify these people. You know, no one comes with a passport or with an identity card or with a driving license there are no documents. So unless there is a detention period, it is impossible for us to make sure that amongst those genuine um, uh, people who are fleeing from war, there isn't some um, threat to security. Um, when it comes to conditions, yes, we have to improve, we have to do more, but we're being left alone. That's the, the whole thing. You're at the European summit there where talk essentially dominated today uh, by these reports that Germany uh, has seen uh, some degree of evidence that uh, the Chancellor Angela Merkel may have had her cell phone conversations spied on by the United States. Is that something that good when you read reports like that, do you think perhaps your I mean, phone calls are being monitored? I do believe that the relations between Europe and the United States must be based on trust. I do believe that we are essentially two sides of the same coin, that um, each and every one of us over here, each and every one of the 28 of us over here is committed to better relations with the United States, but and that's a huge but, allies and friends don't snoop on each other. Joseph Muscat, the Prime Minister of Malta, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. The pleasure was all mine.